the, the conditions for dissent emerging? I think that's a really important question. So it's almost as if, if people are really desperate, then they will protest. And actually, if they're really comfortable, um, they will also have the time to protest. The problem is in the middle, when people are really working hard, they're just getting by, and actually they don't have time to protest. Is that where we are now? Well, I think that we're on the sort of, we're on the boundary, really, between that kind of, um, you know, people are sort of discontented, but they're also apathetic and really tired. And also just, they, they know that, that their choices are constrained, actually. And, and before we, we began to see the emergence of a political alternative, you can understand, like, why, why engage with a political process when the two or three parties are the same um, and you won't get change? So I kind of understand that ap apathy um, and that sense of powerlessness. But I think things are, things are starting to shift. Um, but I think, as I say, the, the problem is, you know, how, how can you articulate this, this idealism it, how, what words would you use? Um, and Corbyn, I think, is a, a paradoxical figure because on the one hand, he, he is idealistic. He is setting out a, a platform of, of beliefs that he's held since the 70s. But on the other hand, he stands for this kind of authenticity. He's a real person. You know, he's not slick, PR, um, product of spin. But actually, I think there's a real problem with authenticity in our culture because I think there's a great deal of fake authenticity around. Name, name some fake authenticity. Well, so in the past, we'd have the, we, we used to have these corporate and financial and political bogeymen, um, the sort of political big beasts, the, um, the Margaret Thatchers, the McDonald's, and these were enemies that we could easily identify um, as enemies and as citizens. If we were like-minded, uh, we would protest against those big... Um, powers. I think what's happened now is this kind of convergence, actually, between power and elites and us. So it's now, um, and you see this in marketing and PR language all the time, there's this language of engagement, of a two-way street. Um, and, and, and I think this is problematic because it, it conceals the ways in which we're now still dominated, actually, and even more, we, society is even more unequal than it was before but we have this sense that we're empowered. And I think fake authenticity really plugs into that because, for example, cyber utopianism. Um, so the internet provides a sense of everyone having a say, that this is now the internet levels the playing field, that we all have a voice on Twitter and so on. But actually, the, in digital culture, real world inequalities are mirrored um, in that virtual sphere. And also, everyone has a voice, but who's being listened to? So there are kind of hidden um, inequalities that, that abound, actually, that in, in internet, um, in digital culture. But, 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 but the, the fake authenticity comes from the sense that we um, somehow have direct access um, to our audience. There's this kind of sense of unmediated, um, direct communication. And I think that that um, is an illusion, actually, that there's the, the big internet giants, the tech um, moguls of Silicon Valley, um, are mediating our communication all the time. But you see fake authenticity in all sorts of other areas, too. You see it in food culture. Um, Give me an example. Well, so there's a real desire for real food, you yeah. know, authentic, organic, locally grown um, food. But actually, the, the big supermarkets and chains have cottoned onto this. So supermarkets now sell their fruit and veg in sort of rustic baskets. And we have the mass market organics. They're, it's organic, technically speaking, but it's mass market. It's, it's industrially produced. Um, Starbucks now has community personality coffee shops, which are kind of unbranded. You know, Tesco's, Harrison Hall coffee shops that have this sort of artisan um, look but and feel. But don't people see through it? I think people do see through it to, to, to a large extent. Um, but I think there's this great rhetoric, actually, of the savvy consumer citizen that we're all exercising our power at the till. We're all really media savvy. We all know how to decode adverts and so on. But actually, how could we? There's so much money being poured into this you know, viral advertising that seems like an entertaining video on YouTube, but is actually... Um, Flogging something. Yeah, but in this kind of very low-key way.